Hello, hey, hey, hey. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to see you guys on. Good afternoon. Huh. I am happy to finally have some time to jump on here. It's been absolutely crazy, hectic. Thank you for the compliments on the hair. Um, but I really wanted to jump on here and just share because we are uh, in a really interesting season. And so I wanted to give some prophetic language uh, to what's happening uh, personally, globally, um, uh, and prophetically in the, in the nation and in this season. So I am um, a little bit tired. I am not coming back to Boston this year unless we schedule something at the end of the year. But uh, Boston is not on my schedule for this year. Um, but yeah, I wanted to jump on and share this. So if you have friends, family that have been um, struggling to figure out uh, what's going on in their life, what they're feeling, what they're sensing. I'll be in London, April of 28. Chicago, I'll be, I'll be up there in October. Um, we're still trying to finalize the speaking event for Chicago. Um, so here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in the spirit realm. There's a lot going on um, just that you can feel it in the air. You can feel tension. You can feel electricity. You can feel expectation. You can feel uh, just a newness um, that the Lord is brewing. So I'm going to actually share um, just some things that will help you understand when you're in a new season. I'm also going to tag on just being able to discern um, when something is of the Lord and when something is not of the Lord, how to discern prophetically when God is moving. So I released a word earlier earlier this week concerning uh, just whirlwinds and openings and avalanches. In, in the last month, I shared with you guys at the beginning of July that the Lord was releasing an avalanche that I saw God releasing uh, just an overtaking of his presence, of authority, of suddenlies, of um, experiences that we could not have written uh, down anywhere and that there was going to be some bumps at the beginning of July. But if we stayed steadfast, we'd begin to see the goodness of God, we'd see uh, God begin to overtake us. And so if you look around the body of Christ, some of the body of Christ is distracted. They're focused on things that are not important at all. But if you understand what God is doing in the spirit realm, we have actually entered into what we call a, a prophetic, prophetic whirlwind, or some people call it a swirl. And literally what that is, is when you step into, um, it's like a portal or opening. So when we talk about things like openings or portals or vortexes, those are not new age language. You know, when um, Jacob had the dream of the angels ascending and descending, uh, he that was an actual opening opening between earth and heaven. And so there are moments in history and there are moments in our lives where there's openings and there's access into the heavenly realm. And there are things that are released from heaven with an ease. And um, there's a places where God kind of encounters us. So it could be considered an open heaven. So we're literally in the last week, in the last week, we have stepped into one of those uh, places in God where you're going to see two things. You're going to see the enemy trying to really come at you, trying to really buffet you, trying to really frustrate you, uh, trying to really make you feel like uh, you don't hear his voice, that God has forgotten and all that. But then on the same note, you're going to begin to see God move and he's going to begin to move with power and he's going to begin to move with strength. Our church is definitely experiencing it. We did a week fast last week. Um, um, and we did water and we would pray in the morning and people could not speak English. The presence of God was falling upon them and all they could pray was in their tongues. And we had visitations at church where the fire of God literally would fall and everybody, you know, was on the ground crying out to God. So we have entered something. And so I want to encourage those of you guys that have felt a little bit of friction, that have felt a little bit of uh, pushback, that it's because God is pushing you into something new. The whole earth is feeling it. I have friends in many different streams of the body of Christ. Uh, one of my friends, JT, was sharing how he had taken um, a, a bunch of 16-year-olds somewhere and they fasted for three days. When they came back, the presence of God fell. They prayed and prophesied for hours 
hours on end. And the Lord is saying that this is not just going to be something that happens. It's not just an experience. And you're not going to have to go to church to hear it. One of our members today prayed for somebody at school who had lumps in their chest. You could feel their lumps. She went to the doctor that afternoon. This morning, they found out that all the lumps are gone. So we're entering into a new normal. We're entering into a new uh, season where God is going to begin to really break down and, and fall down and, and really impact our, our meetings and so on and so forth. So I want to give language to um, just how to discern that a new prophetic season is upon you. How to discern that a new prophetic season is upon you. Because it talks about in scripture, it says, A new thing shall spring up, shall ye not know it. And a lot of times God begins to do things, but because we're so focused on ourselves or what's going on around, we miss that very new thing that we've been believing God for, that we've been contending for. And so the Lord says, in this season, he's getting ready to do a new thing. And so one of the ways that God is brewing and, and you know that he's moving is that there is a hunger. There's a hunger of God. I had one of my daughters uh, Facebook me like, I can't stop reading the word. This is somebody who was having a hard time. But there's this immense hunger where you begin to go wherever you need to go, search out whatever you need to search out to encounter God. You don't go there because you want to hear somebody. You don't go there because you, you know, it's your favorite preacher. You go because you want to encounter God, which I'm going to throw in a shameless plug. We have our builders conference starting uh, tomorrow night here in Raleigh. And if you want to encounter God, you better get in your car and start driving on down here because we're expecting God. So there's a hunger for his presence. Then the, another thing is that you feel a hunger for fasting and prayer. And that's how you know it's not demonic because the devil is not going to have you fasting. He's not going to have you praying. And so you begin to feel this intense need. In matter of fact, in July, I know several ministries that fasted. Our, our ministry fasted. We don't normally fast in July. But I spoke to my friend in Virginia. He took his church through a fast. I talked to my girlfriend in Boston. They've been fasting. There was a hunger. Even on this month, there's been major words uh, by Dutch Sheets and, and several others that there is something that's brewing in this month. So you will see that there's a hunger for fasting and praying. Another thing is that you begin to see the prophetic flowing out of everybody. One true mark of revival is not that it, it, it one God is using one great man. That's not revival. Revival is when everybody in the mist can begin to prophesy. When everybody in the mist can have a word. When everybody in the mist can move in signs and wonders. That is a clue. And what we're going to begin to see is that God is going to begin to raise up everyone. Not just people that are in the fivefold, but people that um that God has anointed to begin to just minister in power and in authority. Another thing that you're going to begin to see and you sense when you've moved, and I'm speaking specifically into the season that we've moved in now. So sometimes when you've moved into what we call a mini prophetic season, you're going to experience some of these. So I've had lots of seasons where I was in what we call the prophetic whirlwind where God is moving so fast. You can't sleep. You're dreaming all day long. You just want to pray. You're in the Holy Ghost. But this is something that's coming on the body of Christ as a whole, and we're going to begin to experience it as a a whole. And this has a lot to do with being divinely connected. I'm so um, excited that you said Colorado because I was actually pressing in into the Lord this afternoon concerning a word for Colorado because that is one of the states that you don't get a lot of prophetic words about. People will prophesy about New York and California and Texas. So I was saying, God, what are you saying about Colorado? So hopefully in a couple of days, I'll have a clear word uh, for concerning that state. Another thing that you will see is that there's a, an unusual usual fear and reverence for the Lord. Not fear like we're afraid to approach him, but there's a level of holiness and a level. I mean, on Saturday, we had an encounter in our church that just left you in awe of who God was. Me and my husband were like, okay, we said we want revival. We said we want to build an apostolic center. Like, are we really, really ready for, um, what God wants to do. So um, God, there's a level of reverence. There's a level of awe that comes upon you when you've entered into a new prophetic season. Dreams, visions begin to intensify. You dream a lot. You have lots of visions. You have a lot of encounters. You have supernatural encounters. If I started going into what our church is experiencing here, we would be here for a little uh, while. But you have unusual encounters in the Holy Spirit. And so 
somebody had asked me to share the difference between praying in tongues and praying in the spirit in tongues. So I'll quickly add that in here. Um, hopefully they'll watch it. I didn't title it that. So hopefully they'll watch it. But when we are all believers, we are all called to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We all have the free gift of tongues. According to Romans 8, it says that the Holy Spirit prays through us in moanings and groanings uh, when we know not what to pray. Every believer can have tongues and every believer can be filled with the Holy Ghost for that personal uh, tongue that you pray to the Lord in. Um, and then you have the gift of tongues, uh, which I won't go too much into uh, the gift of tongues today. And I, I'll do it when I teach a, a periscope on tongues. However, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you have your tongues, you can pray. You can start praying in tongues just like that. You can stop praying in tongues. You can start. You can stop. And th that's how it should be because the Spirit of God is in you. However, there are times when the Spirit of God falls on you or shifts something within you that causes you to begin to pray in tongues that you didn't initiate. So the biggest difference is the initiation. So if we are in a group and I say, everybody, let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Robo Shandara. And we all begin to pray because the Spirit of God is in us. We can do that. But sometimes the Spirit of God just activates something and without you knowing, you begin. And actually that's how the gift of tongues, which is talked about that requires interpretation works. Because... What happens is that the person doesn't know that God is going to speak through them in a tongue. And when it is interpreted, it actually works as prophecy. So someone speaks in a tongue and someone interprets it. So we had a young man who the Holy Spirit had fallen upon this uh, him this week. So what would happen is he ministered and he would speak in tongues and I would interpret and he would minister to people. And so there's one that you initiate because the Spirit of God lives in you. And then there's one that the Holy Spirit just initiates. And it's usually for a particular function. So what you're going to see is an increase in these divine encounters. You're not going to want to stop praying in the Holy Spirit. You're, you may start a fast. You may not want to, to stop fasting. All right. What you also see is divine friendships, divine friendships, divine connections, supernatural connections begin to happen. You begin to meet. I remember between 2008 to 2011, I was in this what, a prophetic world. I mean, I would divinely meet people and they're my best friends to this day. We've been running together. Together. They're in different states <coughs> doing different things for the Lord. And so what you begin to experience is that when God is moving in a season, you're going to begin to have these divine connections. The other thing that you're going to have is uh, divine re relocation. And we've been talking about this for several years, but God's going to begin to talk to you about connecting and being placed in a particular place so that God can do what he wants you to do. It may be a different job, maybe a different city, maybe a different church, but there's divine relocation. And one of the reasons it's divine is that there's an ease and there's a grace in being able to move there. So you say, yes, God, I'll do it. And then God begins to move on your end. That is one of the ways. That is one of the ways. So I'm giving you guys 21 ways today. Um, so you may have five of these. You may have 10 of these. But the Lord is inviting you to, to believe the season that we're in. And we're actually going to be seeing it. Um, do you remember you recommending books on dream interpretation? Um, I will actually be doing the course soon. We'll be doing the dream interpretation course soon. You guys will be able to register for it. But you go to my site. I have recommended books there. All right. Another thing is that you feel like you can't sleep. Like there's this consistent buzz in the air, this excitement that something is about to happen. There's something that is brewing and you just feel this electricity. I mean, I've been trying to sleep for days. The other day I said, I'm going to bed at 10 30 because I am tired. So I go to bed and at 12 o'clock I wake up to go check on my kids and then I can't go to bed. I have to pray and I'm praying about people that I, I just know on Facebook. I've never met them in my life. The Lord's giving me prophetic words and blah, 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 blah. And there is just a season where you get very little sleep. Usually in seasons of, of, of uprising, in seasons of a prophetic shift, in seasons of um, the glory, uh, you don't need a lot of sleep because the Holy Spirit is the one that's really keeping you up. Now, I was telling our church that we need to master rest. You need to be able to rest your spirit. You need to be able to rest your body in order to have sustained revival. Some people get excited. They have one experience. But what God is trying to do in this hour is sustained, that we are in a new place of encounter. All right, you are 
You pray without ceasing. So you may be at work, you may be cooking, and the Holy Spirit is praying through you. That is one of the ways. you. We begin to see instant deliverance and healings. Deliverance is a, ma a must when God is moving prophetically. And so what you begin to see is people getting delivered, and it's not hard. The presence of God falls, and people are delivered. So what you begin to see is instant healings. You pray, and people are healed. Easy, easy. It, there's no striving. There's no pushing. Do you have services on Sunday? Yes, we our church, Legacy Center Church, meets every Sunday at 11 um, in Raleigh. All right. And this this weekend is going to be phenomenal because we have our Builders Conference. So we start tomorrow night, Thursday night, all day Friday, all day Saturday, all the night sessions, and we'll end Sunday. So it's going to be crazy uh, amazing. Another thing that you know you've moved into a new prophetic season is that there's sudden promotions, sudden favor. I know my friend Tiffany Montgomery has been pushing the suddenly. The Lord gave her a word concerning the suddenly. The Lord gave me a word concerning the avalanches. All of them happen. And this is the thing about is suddenly this suddenly feels like a suddenly because in a moment your whole life changes right but most suddenlies have been brewing for years and years and then in a moment you're overtaken by that so for example mary experienced it suddenly when she was told that she was with child with the messiah of the world her whole world flipped upside down but she had been stewarding um a purity and been walking with the lord prior to getting that message uh there's suddenlies that happen david when he experienced his Suddenly, he had been stewarding uh, his presence in the Lord. He had been uh, with Jesus in the, with the sheep. And then Samuel comes and says, you're going to be king. And su suddenly was upon him. But the thing about suddenly is they don't come from any, from nowhere. You should have been, there, there's a place of preparation. So some of us may miss what God is doing because we have not been prepared and our eyes have not been expectant for God to begin to move. And so that's where the, the new thing springs up. Shall ye not know it? come up because we have a lack of preparation another way that you know there's a true move of god or a new prophetic move is that the presence of God in your life begins to impact other people. The presence of God on your life begins to impact other people. So it's not just you are changing and you are experiencing God and you are experiencing his presence. People can see it. I mean, when we came out of church on Sunday, you could see everybody's faces. They were different. They can see it. They can feel it. And this is the season that we're going to be in for seven years. This is a seven years where we're literally stepping into a pool. And it, I know some of you are like, I am not experiencing any of the stuff that she's talking about. None of this stuff is going on in my church. All I can say is and just get plugged in. Get somewhere where God is moving, where God is speaking, where God is, and he is, he's moving everywhere. And even if you're in the middle of nowhere, if your heart is yielded and you want to encounter him, we're in this seven-year season. It's a seven-year season of productivity, a seven-year season of fruitfulness, a seven-year season of building, seven-year season of of um, pioneering, a seven-year season of financial breakthroughs, promotions. This is what we have entered into in this season. Let me just give you a couple, and then I'll answer two or three questions. Um, let's see. The presence of God impacts everyone. And then there's an increase in creativity. There's increase in arts. That We're going to begin to see hear and see music and see films that come straight from the heart of God in this season. And the reason there's an increase in the creativity and in the arts and in production is because there's a, a nearness. The nearness of heaven is so tangible. We can easily hear him and see him. And so therefore we can produce what is on his heart and what he's calling us to do. If you've not found fasted this month, I would encourage you to do so. Even if you're on your own, if you want to grab a couple friends and say, hey, let's fast and just seek God for his presence. I promise you, you will encounter him. I promise you he's going to do something extraordinary. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Of course, we have our Builders Conference this weekend. If you can come, come. I've told you guys before, I used to drive six, seven hours to be where I knew the presence of God would be. I just, I was young. I was single. I could just get in the car and uh, we have our School of the Prophets coming up in Raleigh. We're getting ready to close that out. That will be one of those other crazy meetings. And um, what else? What else? I'm not, okay. 
uh, my life coaching and mentorship course that we are taking. Um, we're training coaches and mentors and pastors and those that are counselors that are believed to uh, have the calling to build people up and, and train them. So if you want to get certified, you can sign up for that at Ask Dr. Faith as well. All right. Let me take a couple questions concerning the prophetic, concerning seasons, um, and then we will uh, go from there. If you guys have any uh, of those. Good, good, good. Dr. Faith, God told me as far as going to be coming down between June and August. Amen. Yeah, a lot of people have been getting that June, July, and August were words, were specific months to prepare. The, what's really going to hit us is going to be between September and October. How do you make sure you're not um, left behind? Well, also you have to believe that God doesn't want to leave you behind, that God is for you. Get into a place where you can hear God for yourself, but also in a place where other people, that is our connect pastor she is putting up legacy center church's website and all that would love for you to, to do it but get in a place where other people hear from god so that you can have others walking with you and, and not you alone all right good any other questions about the prophetic prophetic seasons um you said to prepare how i would look back over the prophetic words over my life you know if god said i'm gonna you know really bless you with the business have you worked towards that business at all if god says i'm gonna you know um you're gonna get married in this season have you worked to prepare to be a good husband or to be a good wife what have you done to prepare for the promises of god over your life if you've been believing for your breakthrough what what does breakthrough look like? You know, I coach people all the time and they say, I believe in God for breakthrough, but you can't even give, you can't articulate what that breakthrough looks like. Then that means most likely you'll miss it. You may already have had it, but because you don't have languaging for it, you may miss it. So it is important. Is it okay to boldly ask a prophet for a word uh, of the Lord concerning them? Um, I guess if you have, if you're looking for a word, you can ask a prophet. Now, if you're asking this prophet, um, I use discernment about how much I prophesy and who I give words to. Uh, but some people just love it and they'll go for it. So I don't see anything wrong with asking. Scripture says you, you have not because you ask not. All right. Um. Someone says they feel the Holy Spirit through a type of sign language. Yeah. Have you um, have you any thoughts on prophecies on Oklahoma? Oklahoma is a well. You have Tulsa, Oklahoma there. That is a, a well of revival. There is so much revival history connected there. And actually what I saw was actually something springing up. And so it, the things that, that have happened in previous years uh, that have been buried and people, even just through religion and normalcy, just kind of going through life, the Lord says there are people there that are marked that have been digging up something and that you're going to begin to see the presence of God uh, begin to spring up in that state. All right. Connecticut, God is sending a lot of ministries up there. God is, is raising up a lot of ministries in the New England area. And I mean, there's so many powerful words concerning the New England area and the fire that America is going to experience starting in the Northeast and then spreading to the West. Do I visit other churches? Well, I pastor a church, so the only reason I would be at another church is if I'm there speaking, and I do travel quite a bit and speak. I'll be in um, Virginia Beach on the 12th of August and somewhere. I'll give you guys my schedule later. All right, what about Burlington, New Jersey? I'll be in Easton, New Jersey. New Jersey is one of those places that is like the forgotten place, but the Lord, one of the words God released about states that have been forgotten are, are going to be states that are first. Nashville is like a prophetic city. So there are seven refuge cities in the state that harbor and host prophets. Nashville is one of those. There are so many amazing uh, movements there, prophets and prophetic voices. Now, this is the thing. You've got to get out of your stream. If all the people around you are the same skin color as you, you're not going to know what's happening in the body of Christ. And so some of you you guys don't know what's happening in your city because you've always gone to the same churches that look just like you that do the same things as you and and god is moving in pockets in different places same thing with um i love seattle and i really feel like there's a uh there's a church there that i love judah smith is up there uh i know they planted a church that's the 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 West Coast really struggles with their cult and they really struggle with new age. But what that means is that God is releasing just a supernatural um, influence of the prophetic and of the supernatural that's going to hit the West Coast. So, um, all right. What do you mean to walk on soft car? Okay, I'm not interpreting dreams today. 
Any other questions concerning the prophetic? Oh, you guys want me to prophesy into every state. I'll do it so at some other point, okay? <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, do you have a prophetic word for Kenya as we're having elections? I have a prophetic word for Africa. Africa and Asia are going to be the nations that the world looks to, that they're going to be the big brothers. They have the Joseph mantle on those nations. And so the Lord is causing Africa and Asia to um, be the, the, the place of rest. It's going to be the place of business. It's going to be a place. I mean, if you look at even at, my husband and I do business, when you look at this country, that are best for business right now. Africa is on the top. So I do have a prophetic word concerning that. We will tape some of our builders conference, but not all of it. So maybe when we release some of these prophetic words during our builders conference, you guys will be able to hear them. Um, but yeah, that's all. That's all I have concerning that. I'm sure, I mean, I have more, but we don't have time. Uh, I believe God has said that Raleigh and sees my fear of influence. I live in Texas. Come. He's saying, come and be part of Legacy Center. I'm just kidding. But if he, it, your sphere of influence is where you're going to have most impact, you're going to have most fruitfulness, you're going to have most growth, and your purpose is going to be actualized. And so when he tells you a place is a sphere of influence, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to live there. So I have dominion in LA and, and New York and Miami and different cities that God has given me influence in. What that means is when I go there, that I will have access to that city in the spirit realm and be able to release uh, words and to be able to release what um, what God wants to do in that city. Um, yeah, I think they're going to record the conference. So I don't know if we'll be selling it, but they're going to record it. Okay. All right. And didn't know what to do. If you hear the voice and it's the voice of the Lord, you say, God, here I am. Speak to me. Um, I've been trying to locate to you since world changers. Guys, this is the thing about moving. I was just coaching somebody through this. You look for a job in that city. You look for an apartment, right? When those doors open, you go. Now, some people, the Lord will say, go first. We've had people that just picked up and came, and the Lord wanted to see their level of obedience. Once they came, I'm sorry, my baby's up. Let me pick her up. Once they came, then everything else opened. So it depends on your level of faith. Some things... The Lord will um, make a way for you, and then you follow that path. And some things, he will want you to take a step first, and then he'll make a way. So it depends on where you're at in your season. But if, if you're running after God, and you're running for, uh, towards what he wants you to do, you, there's going to be fruitfulness in whatever decision you make. All right? Bless you guys. If there are no other questions, we will chat. How do I sign up to teaching and mentoring from you in London? Um, so, oh, we are taking mentors. Uh, so our mentoring, um, we're taking, me not mentors, mentees. If you want to be menteed, my Destiny uh, Mentoring Company is taking mentees. So we have mentors that I have trained that are mentoring people. And you can email us at destinymentoring at askdrfaith.com and you will get an application. I've mentored people in Japan, Singapore, all over the world. Everything is done through Skype or telephone, so it doesn't matter where you live. What can emerging prophets do to stay in the prophetic season? Oh, I'm sorry I missed that, but I would like to answer it if you could put it back. Uh, when are you coming to Maryland? I would have to look at my schedule. We're going to put up my itinerary. That's my baby touching my hair. Um, you can go to my website and get all that information. I know I'll be there sometime this year. I'll be in Eastern New Jersey Labor Day weekend. I speak Saturday morning, I believe. All right. The one that asked about the prophets and emerging. I love training prophetic people and speaking um, clarity into their lives. So quickly put that back up and I can answer. Um, can you pray that your, yes, your tongue should grow. If you have the same tongues that you had when you were filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not going from glory to glory. Tongues is just like my daughter here who starts speaking, you know, just broken English. Oh, there she wants to show her face. Um, <laughs> my daughter, she, but now we, she had what we call a lung, a language burst, right? Where she is speaking full sentences. As you grow as a believer, your language should grow. You should be able to maneuver and you should be able to also speak different tongues meaning in worship 
Okay, we're almost done. In worship, your tongues can be different. In warfare, your tongues are going to be different. Um, when you are praying by the Lord, your tongues are going to be different with the Lord. So you need to be maturing and growing in your tongues and the Holy Spirit can um, help you. My tongue shifted twice this weekend alone. It's been crazy over here. Um, so... How do you know the gift of God that he's given you? Well, in our business, we give uh, spiritual gifts assessment. Uh, we help you discover your purpose. So if that's somewhere where you're stuck, you can email us. Info at AskDrFaith.com. Someone says, I'm not growing prophetically. You need to be in a prophetic church. You need to be around people that pray. You need to be around uh, a place where that they love the Holy Spirit and they welcome the Holy Spirit. And you need to study it. So there are books on my website under recommended books. I have 50 books in different sections, categories that you guys can go and study, study, study until you get into a place where you can be cultivated and trained up. Okay. Bless you guys. Let me just release this season upon you. I just pray for those that are watching God that you would release just as a prophetic season of encounter, a prophetic season of breakthrough, a prophetic season of favor, a prophetic season of promotion and acceleration. God, I thank you, Father, that you would increase in their dreams, you would increase in their uh, reading of the word, that you would increase in their righteousness, you'd increase in their faith. We just release the power of God over them. I ask that you would touch God, all those that are watching, that your presence would begin to manifest in their car and in their room and in their job, wherever they are, that they would begin to feel an encounter. I sense that some people are watching have really struggled with depression. The Lord's going to break that heaviness off of you. You're going to begin to even want to laugh. The joy of the Lord is going to come upon you. You're going to begin to experience immense joy. So God, I just thank you, Father, that even right now you're lifting off heaviness, that you're breaking off depression. There's somebody, and I want you to email me at info at askdrfaith.com. You broke your right hand. You broke your right hand. I even see a sling or a cast on there. The Lord says that he's going to begin to heal your hand. Even right now, you're going to begin to feel a fire in your hand. You're going to begin to feel a fire in your hand. And when next time you go to the doctor, it's going to be fine. And your healing is going to begin to be accelerated. And so God, we just thank you that the kingdom of God is near and the kingdom of God is at hand and the kingdom of God is here. I thank you, Father, that the kingdom of God is not limited by location, that wherever your children are right now, your presence can touch them. There are many of you guys that have been crying because you felt alone and you felt like there was no one around you to understand you. And the Lord says that I'm getting ready to release people. I'm getting ready to release leaders after my heart. I'm getting ready to release mentors and coaches and spiritual parents to begin to raise you up and to begin to support you. And the Lord uh, says for some of you guys, he's beginning to deal with your heart that in before you can move into this new realm, that you have to forgive, uh, that you have to let go of the bitterness, you have to let go of the anger. One of you guys, it's a woman, you've been married about six months, and you guys are on the verge of divorce, and you are very angry with the Lord, and you're also angry with your husband. And the Lord says, as you begin to release that and relinquish that, he's going to begin to release that. And um, I'm hearing a, a word uh, for a, girl, a lady named Beth. Is there a Beth? On, on on the Periscope right now. I just want to quickly release the word. Just say, that's me. If your name is Beth, you could be Elizabeth, uh, but you go for Beth. Um, if you're not, that's fine. The Lord is saying that he's actually uh, taking you to a place called Bethlehem, meaning that where you are right now is not your place of destiny, that he's moving you into a new place where things are going to begin to be birthed in you and the promises of God are going to begin to manifest and you're going to begin to see what God has spoken over your life. So I bless you guys. I I just pray God's best over you. There, there you go. Okay. There, Elizabeth. So the, I just feel like the Lord's releasing you into a new place. I feel like you've been struggling uh, concerning this, this move or this shift. And the Lord is saying, that is me. I'm speaking to you. And he's going to begin to move you into that new place. All right. Bless you guys. We will talk very, very soon. Make sure that uh, if you want to be certified as a coach or a mentor, you sign up. The rest of you guys buy products. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.